just to say hello, tell me why you've decided you want to come to practice meditation so we can have a little a little Q&A. Why, why are you interested in meditation or have you meditated before? Do you want to start? No. You've never meditated? Yeah, yeah? good. Okay, yeah, how about you? Just one time, yeah. And yourself? First time. First time, okay, good. So before we begin, I'll just give myself a little introduction for you. My name is Brian Summers. Uh, I did my PhD here at uh, Dongguk, at the Sun Ha Kwa. Uh, and I'm lecturing here now at the uh, Myeongsang Sangdam Shimli Hakwa, right, for meditation, for, um, medi- uh, for psychological counseling, right? And one of my uh, specialties is uh, mindful self-compassion, or Chagi Yan Min. Uh, so we'll be sort of incorporating Chagi Yan Min, or mindful self-compassion, today when we practice, okay? Okay, so uh, I'll just introduce the program to you quickly before we start. Um, Today's workshop covers a practical approach, meaning not too much studying, more practicing, right? Suheng, suheng or shilsip, right? Um, And we're going to learn about managing our downtime when we're uh, not working and how to balance that against uh, our busy lives, right? So we'll do about 50% theory and about 50% 50% actual meditation practice. First, let's take a look at uh, what it means to be productive. So these days, we're very busy, right? We have deadlines and we have essays to write for school or we have all of these different uh, things that we need to do to survive, to make money, to study, to graduate, whatever. So while well, the Industrial Revolution, so let's think maybe 200 years ago, people are working very much like machines in order to be as productive as possible. If you want to take a look, do you know Charlie Chaplin? He used to do some silent movies and you can see the video here. What's this conveyor belt, right? You can say it's like uh, an assembly line. This started early in the 1900s and it was a way to maximize production, do as much as possible, right? The problem is, As you can see here, it says, oh, he's crazy. He has to work really hard. And in just a moment, he's working so hard, the machine actually swallows him. And we might feel like we're being swallowed by our work. We're too busy. The requirements on us are too strong. And there he is being eaten by the gears. By doing less, we cannot only ease the sense of overwhelm but we might actually do or accomplish more by slowing down, all right? So just because you're working hard doesn't mean that you're being productive necessarily. So I like to think about spinning your tire, all right? If you're spinning your tire, are you moving forward? No. Are you using up your energy? Yes. It's it's, it's futile. It's futile. So what we would like to do is work less when possible, right? Especially in circumstances like this. Uh, just a side note though, it says here, reducing stress and increasing productivity are desirable results, right? But appropriate effort is more than that. Appropriate, uh, above all, appropriate effort as a moral discipline at its core, right? a Buddhist practice. So being productive is fine, um, but if it's, uh, only if the results of this productivity are wholesome. So the whole theme, the whole theme of today I want you to think about is asking yourself how much work is enough and how much work is too much, right? So in other words, where is my threshold? Where is my threshold? And how do you know when you need rest? So can I ask, how do you know if you need to rest? Do you have any sign, any signal? So for example, for me, I feel fatigue and neck pain. And I think like, oh, I must be working a little bit too hard. Are there any other signs that you're working too much? Possibly in your body, right? Yeah, sleepy, exactly. You want, you want to rest, you want to lie down, right? Any others? I have here, maybe we, can, we can't concentrate. 
right? Or if you have headaches, neck aches, back aches, or fatigue, right? So you can, you can easily be angered, right? So then the theme also is about slowing down. When we realize we need the rest, then we need to know how to rest. <laughs> Sometimes it's difficult to rest. So slowing down. And meditation is a tool we can use to help us to slow down. So the first practice that we're going to do is actually called samatha or cessation meditation, if we use it in English. And you can see we have two Chinese characters up here, Ji and Guan. And Ji is what, stop, right? Guan means to observe. But we're only going to do one at a time. First is Ji, Ji or Samatha. So this is a fundamental practice. And it just means watching a single object, whether it could be a thought, it could be a sound, it could be an image. We're going to use the breath. Breath is usually where meditation begins. So watching the breath. So you see here one pointedness, calmness, stabilizing. I have a picture of an anchor, okay? an anchor. And this is symbolic of the practice. Why we're going to anchor our attention on one thing. And in this case, on the breath. So once you realize the mind has wandered away, back to the anchor, the anchor is going to bring it back and I'm going to focus on the breath. Um, so all we're going to do is sit comfortably. If you maybe rock back and forth a little bit, try and find a balance point so that you're not leaning one direction or the other. Back and forth or side to side. So let's just start by taking maybe two or three really deep breaths in. So. And as you breathe in, just notice the breath inside your body. You can feel the air coming in your lungs. Maybe your stomach expands. Maybe you feel it in your throat or your nose. Take a moment to feel where the breath can be felt. Where do you feel the breath? Breathing in, feeling the wind in your nostrils, down your neck, throat, into your lungs, expanding your stomach, and exhale from your stomach, lungs, throat, neck, nose. Now we're going to release the breath and come back. When you're ready, you can open your eyes. So in mindful-based stress reduction, they have this great acronym. It's so simple. It's STOP, S-T-O-P, right? And it's just so you can remember quickly and easily because sometimes when we're so busy, it's easy to forget what you're supposed to do, right? It's like, oh, I'm all anxious. What do I do to help myself with mindfulness? Stop. So literally stop. G, right? G myung sang, or G means stop. And that's what we did just now. We did the stop and the take a breath, S and T. And that's all we did. And that's a breathing meditation. But there's a second half to stop, isn't there? It's O and P. 
And that's observe and proceed, observe and proceed. So the second half then is going to be observe or observation meditation, right? observation meditation. And so you can see here, now we have the guan, the guan, right? So guan is vipassana or vipassana. And this is the second half of this fundamental practice, right? So vipassana is almost always, or maybe I should say always practiced together with samatha, right? So they're, they're two in one practice. So the stopping is just so that we can calm. Then we can observe and take a look. Oh, what's happening? What's going on? You know, what do I need? So when your neck is sore, your head is for, sore, or you have some like upset stomach, or you feel sleepy, something like this, that's your body telling you something, right? It's, it says like, stop for a second. You're too busy, you need to have some rest. Right? So we're just learning very simply to not ignore the body. Right? So like if you have a headache, take a Tylenol, and keep going. But the headache is like a message which says, eh, Tylenol's okay, but maybe you need to rest some too, right? So after we do the breathing, we're then going to explore what's happening, right? To sort of understand what our own bodies are telling us. Find a comfortable position. <clears throat> Whatever the sound, inside or out, just watch it with your ears, listening and letting it fade away. There might be many things in your mind. And maybe not. Hopefully what we can take away today is that working a lot, working much is not the same as working well, right? And so any amount of pause in our day um, from the busy life that we have is good, right? It could be 35 minutes like we just did, it could be 35 seconds. Because sometimes you simply don't have time, right? Sometimes you're in your office or you're wherever. So maybe you only have 10 seconds, okay? then 10 seconds is good too. And so what we're doing, the meditation that we've done is to help us realize what's going on inside. Am I tired? Am I burnt? Am I burnt out? And if I am, how can I readjust my effort right, to be as effective as possible? And as a result, hopefully, we can have less depression and stress, less burnout, and even less wasted time, right? Perhaps we could have more effective work and efficiency. And we might even find that what was once unpleasant might be less unpleasant, even pleasant at times. And of course, as you noticed, you're going to be distracted, right? So cultivating that habit of stop and observe, stop and observe, um, it can help break the busy mind. It can break the cycle of busy work. And it can give you some time to recognize, reflect, and notice what you're doing and what maybe what your body is telling you. Right? So you can ask yourself a couple of questions. Am I spinning my tires? Uh, am I overwhelmed or am I challenged or am I safe? And like the in the Nikayas, am I too tight or am I too loose, right? And with, hopefully, we'll have that nice 
melody, that in-between, right, that gives us the, the most satisfying sound, or the most satisfying feeling. So the question then is, if this was a little bit too much for the future, maybe you can do shorter periods, and then in time build up to longer periods, if that's what you want to do. Um, or maybe you can recognize uh, oh, which was the practice that was sort of suited to what I need right now. So it sounds like maybe the breathing or the samatha was a little bit more comfortable for you. If so, maybe you can put your attention there for a little while. This was just like a big introduction to many different things. So just by noticing that was, that was very good. If there's no other questions, and then we can, we can wrap it up, we can close. Yeah. Nothing else? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for coming out. Yeah. <laughs>